Our brain comes equipped with some pretty powerful coping skills. These skills come into play any time we are faced with a threat that seems big enough or scary enough to threaten our life. And if we've encoded a traumatic experience, these coping skills might become a regular part of our day-to-day -day experience for better or for worse. The coping skills I'm referring to are, of course, those four Fs, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn, and the two Ds, dissociation and defensive rage. In these next series of videos, we're going to spend some time unpacking these coping skills, how they come to be, what their jobs are, what they look like in our day-to-day -day lives if we're experiencing them. And in this video, we're gonna, going to start with the first two, fight and flight. These two coping skills have some commonalities in terms of how our body is responding in a moment. They're both bringing our brain and body online into an activated state to move into action and to do something different immediately. Because of those experiences in a fight or flight state, our muscles are going to tense up, our heartbeat is going to increase, we are going to take in more air, and other primary organ systems will shut down. We'll no longer feel hungry or even feel like we have to use the restroom if that was a concern prior to the threat. These two experiences are very different though, of course. You might imagine that the word fight and the word flight have some different connotations. When we experience a fight response, we're moving into dukes up. I'm going to engage whatever the threat is. I'm going to try to actually change the threat in some way, shape, or form. Fight often comes up when there isn't an opportunity to flight or flee, get out of there, and when our system knows that freeze isn't a viable option. In extreme cases, fight can take us to that defensive rage that I mentioned earlier. And in fact, our little friend Amy the amygdala has a specific nucleus that gets pinged in fight as well as defensive rage experiences. And if that little nucleus comes on board big time, then we're in a zoned out state of rage, fighting for our lives. But fight in our day-to-day -day life can show up as irritability, aggression, crossing other people's boundaries. And it's all coming from a state of our being, feeling threatened and as though we have to force ourselves on the world around us in order to stay safe. We have to take control, manage, and create what needs to be done and lash out at anything that might get in our way. It can be a very successful coping strategy in a moment of threat. It can make a perpetrator cower or even go away. We can wave our arms and get big and scary at a dog that's chasing us and the dog might run off and it's highly taxing on our nervous system and our relationships to live this way on a daily basis. Flight, on the other hand, is just what it sounds like in some respects. We're avoiding running away from getting out of that situation. The day-to-day -day symptom presentations of flight might surprise you. Flight shows up a lot like avoidance, numbing out with substances, food, or watching TV shutting ourselves down, disconnecting from the world, hiding. Flight is a way that we stay clear of the things that are scary. And it doesn't just have to be a person, it can be anything. If we've been in a car accident, we might be in a flight mode from cars and not want to interact with cars at all. These are all symptoms of an initial encoding experience where our brain was trying to keep us safe. If they're occurring, after a traumatic experience. In a traumatic experience itself, these symptoms or these behavioral manifestations make sense. Our brain's going, this is how I stay alive, but here's where it gets messy. If we've successfully avoided a threat through one of these mechanisms in the past, or enough times through one of these mechanisms in the past, it, sometimes it depends on how high level the threat was or the repetition of using the coping mechanism, the one that we use can become our go-to. 
So we might default to fight for everything, or we might default to flight for everything. Remember our little friend Amy generalizes her data and her coping skills work the same way. And so if you're caught in a fight or flight behavioral pattern, here's how you'll know. Just go back and review this video. Those are your signs and notice, are you engaging in any of those behaviors or any like behaviors? And the good news is that this is your brain keeping you safe, which means we have the tools to help Amy feel better. Applying that havening touch and doing the CPR for the amygdala when you notice that behavior showing up. These behaviors always have some sort of energetic presence in our body. Getting to know what that feels like. Leaning in with self-love and going, high five brain, thank you for keeping me safe. And choosing to do something different in that moment, creating your own exposure paradigms to create functional change in your life. We have so much power to help our mind and body heal and sculpt the world we want to live in. Um.